This conference will now be recorded. So, uh, in today's class, we are going to discuss about some uh, basic networking concepts like uh, what is public IP. Uh, Sushinta, you can uh, make these points as a points. You can take these points as your reference. Okay. Yeah, yeah, then. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> what is public IP? What is private IP? Okay. Uh, and then what, uh, there are some uh, classifications in IP addresses, right? So we are going to discuss about it. We discuss about IP address classifications. Okay. What is network address translation? These are very, very important uh, interview, interview point of questions. And also, you, you must need to uh, aware of these things, actually. And then, what is submitting? Okay, uh, we can start with these topics. Uh, moving forward, I will update this sheet actually. Okay, so um, in the last class, I have explained you regarding uh, what is uh, <coughs> region and what is availability zone, what is uh, data center, all these things, right? So uh, uh, let me let me give you the quick uh, recap of that class. Okay, AWS regions. If you go, if you go and search this like this AWS regions, it will show uh, 18 regions across the globe. Uh, keep that in mind that all the regions are not uh, not countries. Okay, across the globe, AWS has uh, opened opened this uh, AWS regions across the globe in 18 regions, right? So you have to keep that in mind that they are they are only regions, not that they are uh, countries. Okay, uh, in the regions, what we have, we have uh, uh, we have availability zones. Availability zones. Okay. Uh, if you see this image, this is the North Virginia data center. Okay. Um, this is the this is North Virginia region, right? So, in regions, uh, let's say suppose it's a I am not sure about the where the where that is located. Here it is. Okay. This is the North Virginia. And then in North Virginia, we have different three availability zones. Uh, not availability zones, there are these are data centers. Data centers. So in these three data centers, we have uh, six availability zones. I have shown you yesterday, right? So if I click on launch instance. It, it shows like that there are six availability zones. So whenever you are going to uh, whenever you are going to create an instance, it will show you how how many uh, in which region or in which uh, subnet you are going to uh, create that instance, right?
we have already deleted yesterday since it seems like here there are uh, six available results right? yes east to one one a one b one c one d one e. these are the availability results okay but that not data centers are not like uh, available to jobs so in the region we have different different data centers in the data centers we have availability zones under availability zones we will have uh, physical servers okay can take this as image as a difference or any we can take any of these images as a reference right so these these are the physical servers of um, uh, let's say suppose these are the physical servers of aws north virginia region so under uh, north virginia region we have different uh, uh, data centers or availability zones under availability zones we have physical servers on top of the physical servers we will have uh, Okay, uh, let me see. on top of that physical server, we will have uh, <coughs> on top of physical servers, we will have. Uh, networking cards networking cards on switches along with the <coughs> virtual machines okay everyone is clear with this concept <clears throat> if you are going to create any instance in this aws cloud that means that uh, the instance is going to be created any created any of the aws region in the any of a, <clears throat> any of the availability zone which you have selected on top of that availability zone there is there should be some physical server on on that physical server you are going to create your virtual machine from your laptop by using AWS Cloud account. Okay. Hope everyone everyone is clear with this concept. Okay. <clears throat> if you don't understand, please ask me. I, I will explain you one second. Because if you don't understand this concept, uh, you will get a lot of confusion while you're working with your organization because they will tell you like uh, uh, go to that AWS uh, or Tokyo region and create some instance on some uh, availability zone of one C and uh, uh, with the public or private IP, they they will tell you like that. If you don't understand what is the region and what is the availability zone or what is the uh, public IP or private IP, it will be very tough for you to uh, survive in your organization. Okay. <clears throat> so um, until this point, we are clear. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, explain you what is the public IP and what is the private IP. So uh, let's say suppose we are in a class. Okay, let's say suppose we are studying in a, a class of 10. So everyone will have a uh, role number, right? So um, private IP, private IP. I'm explaining you about private IP. Everyone will have uh, numbers like one roll number one two three like that right so that that means that 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 private ip or the private number is local we are using that local in okay. case from the from the class 10th you are going to attend your uh, final examinations 
10th class final examinations at that time you will have your own uh, hall ticket number right that is that should be public public if you are going to attend your public examination means you will have your public number public unique uh, hall ticket number why right? so that should be unique that's uh, and that is the, that is that's means it should be accessible public ip means uh, it is it is accessible over the internet okay in previous class we have uh, we have created one ec2 instance in our cloud okay mm. otherwise i will create a new one from here only um, that's also our, um, for our new um, it's already created uh, yes it's one year and i'm here you can find that in last class we have dis discussed about auto and public ip it, it was disabled now so i'm going to enable it and then <clears throat> i'm going to uh, leave all the things as blank and I'm going to add start storage and tags and configure security group. I have selected, I'm going to select an existing security group. So all these sh steps should be remind when you're going to create an instance. Okay. And then I'm going to review and launch my instance here. It will be going to ask for key pay. Here also I'm going to create an uh, select an existing key pay. In last class, we have created batch one new, uh, new key pay part one uh, guys keep that in mind we can use this key you can use this key pair for number of instances uh, not only need not only need to everyone we are going to, when you are going to create an instance uh, there is no need of creating the new key pair for us if you if you lost your key okay if you if you lost your key you are not able, you are not supposed to or you are not able to log into this log into that machine if you don't have your key with you okay keep that in mind and also keep your key safely with you okay so here i'm going to learn uh, i have created an instance and this is the instance which is going to be launched for us let's say suppose this is august instance So it is in running running set so <clears throat> just to smooth this so here you can see the public ip assigned for this and you can see that private ip also is assigned for this private ip means if you are working in if you are going to connect with your internal instances so here uh, let's say suppose I'm working for uh, Wipro organization. So in, in in Wipro organizations, I have lot of lot of servers here, right? So to communicate with these servers, there is no need of public IP and there is no need of internet, right? So I can you make use of this private IP and I can connect to these instances if whenever I need it. But if I want to connect, but if I want to connect from this instance to internet internet in the sense let's say suppose i'm going to I, I wanted to install some softwares in this uh, uh i want to install telecom in this instance so then definitely i need to log into this instance and i i want to search for telecom download for uh ubuntu server and with a particular version right so at this time if this server wants to connect with the internet then definitely we need public ip so keep that in mind if, if in from your organizational instance if you need to connect to the internet then definitely you want a public ip okay clear hope you have got what is a public ip and private ip that there is a difference between public ip and private ip so hope you got it is for it is for 
organization process means that to connect internally connect internally without And then, so here there are some uh, classifications in public IP and private IP. Okay, uh, IP address classifications. If I uh, search for IP address classifications, so here you can find that. There are uh, actually there are five IP address classifications, but it is showing in short term uh, three types of classifications only. Let me open the images for it. So that it will... Okay. Here you can see that You can find this table right so here it, it is showing like um, <clears throat> 0, 0 to 127 128 to 191 and 192 to 223 it is showing like that right so there are five types of classifications IP address classifications okay IP In class A type, if you uh, if you go to your command line, if you go to your command line and pin uh, NS lookup, you have you have you must have heard about it, this, right? NS lookup www.google.com is showing that the IP of NS lookup I'm sorry, I typed it in mistake. Here you can find that there is some IP address, right? So this is the IP address of Google.com. So every website or every uh, every URL of any any website, it will contain IP address. So without uh, that IP address should be in the range of uh, these three class these these three type of class term uh, A B C D. We are we are not uh, supposed to use these D and E columns because uh, only A B C D type of uh, a, B, C, D, E, these type of IP addresses are we are using and mostly the C type of uh, IP addresses are using for a domestic purpose like uh, if you have uh, if you have uh, routers in your uh, home or in your shops these um, C type of IP addresses will be all allocated to this type of routers and mostly uh, A, A and B type of instances and A, a and B type of IP addresses are going to be assigned to our instances whenever we create in our environment. Okay, so 
this is not our initial cell august instance so here you can find this 35.170.72.46 if you go and check this ip address classifications it should be between 0 to 127 or it should be between 128 to 191 and 192 to 223 everything every ip in the world should be between these three ranges only or else these five ranges only it won't go for any other uh, IP ranges okay all the IP addresses are classified into these regions only if you go and search for your uh, uh, in search in your command prompt like uh, IP config it will show you like your IPv4 address is like this only there are there is ipv6 address only uh, ipv6 has address is also there but we are also not using that ipv ipv6 address so every ipv4 address should be in, in the range of that a b c d e type type of classification classifications only okay so um, there there should be a there should be ip address for every mobile or every internet connected device or every laptop or every virtual server you are going to be created right so you have to keep that in mind ip addresses are five, five uh, uh, under the classifications of five ip address should be and there are two types of addresses ipv4 and ipv6 you, you can find this ipv6 address as well here you can find this IPv6 address is like so it should be not it should not be uh, easy to identify we can make use of only IPv4 addresses only okay so um, in class A IP address this is very very important concept and also you don't want to uh, keep everything in the mind but you should be aware of these things only. Uh, you don't want to uh, worry about these IP address classifications. You can make use of Google and uh, what you can make use of Google when you are working with your instances. And what is the IP address? Should I uh, select select to create the instance? And what is the ranges of the IP addresses you can select in your uh, uh, from your Google only? And also. Um, and I also wanted to uh, give you some ranges of IP address classifications. Okay, um, let me give me a second. I'm going to give that. If I explain you like this, you won't understand anything. So I am going to explain you like 1.0.0.1.2. Uh, 126.255.255.255.254 okay this is class a type of public ip classification and b if you go to b okay 128.2 actually uh, from one one from one to it's like it is a 34 bit right so here it is one is 8 bit and 0 is 8 bit and another 0 8 bit and last one is 32 bit uh, and 8 bit so if if you combine these eight four eight bits it will be a 34 32 bit ip address it's also same every ipv4 address is 32 bit operational only uh, if you find uh, uh, there is some um, concepts in our uh, earlier classes like 0, 0, 0 like <coughs> let me open a new notepad and explain it to you 0, 0, 0 32 bit operational uh, operational uh, type of boolean numbers will be like this right so 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 and 1, 0, 1, 0 
I'm not aware of this, but the two operations should be uh, here like this only. So uh, you, you must have to keep that in mind, right? If this is the 32 bit operation, uh, operation number and every digit indicates that it is an 8 bit operation. Okay. So from 1 to 126, it is like uh, <coughs> IP address. IP, these are public IPs. Keep that in mind. From 1 to 126 range, these are public IP addresses of class A. And from 128 to um, from 128 to 128 from 128.0 128.1.0.1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1
you give me a second particular range and named that as private ip ranges so 10.0.0.0 to 10.0.0.0 okay this is the private ip ranges okay so here you can find this for our instance okay you can find that public ip is range of 35 172.46 so and private ip is under private ip ranges only so whenever you are going to create your instance the public ip should be in the range of 1 to 126 and the private ip should be 10 to 10.25 if you are going to take the class uh, if you have selected your subnet as class a okay here you can find it, 35 dot 170 dot 72. so it is between 1 to 20, 126 right 35 and also private number is 10 dot it, it is start, started with 10 dots right so here you can find it at 10 dot <coughs> okay if you go to uh, some other instances also there but they are not active you can you cannot find uh, ip addresses so keep this mind keep this keep this in mind the public ip range should be like this and private ip range should be like this if you are using class b type of uh, ranges the ip address private ip should be uh, i'm going to give you the range of private ip 172.16.0.0 uh, to Mm, 172.31.255.255 okay this is the only con confusing concept in our entire aws for me as well but uh, i'm very much familiar with that so you you don't want to bother about it you, you don't want to worry about it you can only simply make use of google and uh, you can find your ip address ranges as well Okay, 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255. Okay, uh, mostly you you won't use class C type of public IPs and private IPs in organization mostly they will choose these uh, class a type of uh, ip addresses and class b type of addresses only so if you try to keep keep the keep in your mind from uh, what are the ranges of class a and class b you will get an idea of uh, ip ranges what about the uh, ip if whether it is a public ip of class a or the public ip of class b okay so everyone is clear hope everyone is clear with ip address ranges if you don't understand ask me i will explain you later uh, second type as well okay dear sir dear oh okay yeah. clear right hello everyone is clear i think everyone is clear with this concept public ip and private ip yeah yeah clear sir clear okay yeah this yeah. is <clears throat> okay so region availability zone physical servers ip addresses and uh, all these things you are aware of right next public ip and private ip and the ip address classifications are completed so what is nat and what is submitting so i'm going to um, let me check here yeah. 825 right <coughs> so network address translation is nothing but let's say suppose um, let me give you the I'm going to open a frame for you and I'm going to explain you like <clears throat> let's say suppose um, suppose you are 
uh, working in an organization like uh, Vipro. Okay, under Vipro, uh, there are a lot of uh, employees, right? Here you can find that <clears throat> let's say suppose here there are uh, 500 members are working in Vipro okay so uh, they want to connect to an internet okay here you can mention it as it is an internet to connect to this internet okay as we discussed in our class uh, there should be some uh, okay there should be some uh, router right so to connect to an internet we need a router okay <clears throat> so from here uh, so here five, uh, let's say suppose five members are working in a Vipro organization they all are connected to the, their router from via their router uh, they will have their local broadband or whether it may be geo or any other broadband broadband services okay Mm, let us name it as Geo. From here to it, it is going to be connected to the internet. Okay. <clears throat> So this is your office. <coughs> you have sits under this uh, this cave cabin, and you have your own laptop with you, which is provided by your Vipro organization. So if you want to connect to internet, the traffic will be routed from your local laptop to okay from your local laptop to uh, this router, and via this router to it will it is going to be connected to your uh, internet service provider. And from there, the traffic will be routed to internet. Okay. <clears throat> so here, you will have only you will have your private IP addresses with you, right? Uh, and here, ten dot zero dot zero dot one, and ten dot ten dot zero dot zero dot two. And dot zero dot zero dot three and here ten dot zero dot zero dot four and here ten dot zero dot zero dot five. So <clears throat> here five five IP addresses are allocated to the five laptops of our employees and whenever they try to they are want they wanted to access the internet via private ip address they will connect to their router and from their router to they will connect to their service provider and they will connect to the internet right so <clears throat> well after coming to the router all the traffic will be changed as public ip okay all the traffic will be changed as a public IP of range like uh, uh, classes. Let me explain you. Uh, whether it may be uh, from this range. One twenty five dot uh, like one twenty five dot zero dot two five four dot one twenty three or something. Okay, so um, 
here from private IP address to the router it is uh, common for every every person whenever they want to connect to the internet the traffic will be converted as a public IP and from the public IP the internet service provider will accept the traffic so because whenever we try to access to the internet we need a public IP right as I said earlier as I shown you in a uh, so whenever we want to try to access an internet we need a public IP for mustanship I have explained it clearly right in case if they want to connect internally from 10.0.0.1 to 0.0.2 there is no need of internet access right so for that purpose they don't need they know they, they don't need a, any public IP and they know they don't need internet internet access so they can communicate uh, the, the servers can communicate internally without any need of internet and any need of public IP but if they want to connect to the internet and get down uh, try to download some Terraform or Python on this server they definitely need public IP so router will take care of that converting private IP to the public IP and public IP will be uh, connecting with the internet service provider and we can download all the software required software from the internet okay got it are uh, are you able to try to understand my point is it are it, uh, it is confusing you hope everyone is clear with that okay uh, this entire process can be called as nat network address translation okay network address translation
Yeah, am I audible to you? Hello? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, until this concept, you are very clear, right? You got everything which I, have, which I have discussed in our class today. Until this concept. If you yeah, stop yeah. So anything, let me know, I will explain you. So, all the things are covered in our latest updated notepad, right? So, <clears throat> so I'm going to stop here uh, because it's submitting is a uh, little bit some like confusing concept. So, it will, it, it will take some time. So, I, I won't understand. I won't uh, go to explain this concept now. So you are aware of the, what is public IP and what is private IP and IP address classifications and the network address translation. Until here, you are very clear. I think I believe. If you uh, don't understand any any of this concept, please let me know. I will explain it clearly. So I will share this uh, notepad with you on WhatsApp. Uh, on WhatsApp, and I hope you are also having. Right. So whenever you get time, you will just go to this notepad and we'll check. You just check it. You will get some idea. Otherwise, you can <clears throat> you can go to the internet and you can search for what is IP address classifications, uh, class A, class B, class C type of classifications. You will get some idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. My screen is uh, visible to you, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's okay <clears throat> so please try to practice how to create an instance and how to connect with that instance as i explained in a way uh, in our previous class like uh, so you have all i think you have also installed putty and putizen in your local right so everyone is yeah. installed i think okay so you are aware of public ip and private ip and i also explained you uh, we can uh, whenever you get some idea of VPC concept, so you will you will get all the understandings of this concept uh, under the instance section. So, okay, so the available zone security group, CMI ID, VPC ID, all these concepts will be uh, uh, will be understood to you. So you you don't uh, you don't uh, get confusion what what all what are all the things about what rest of the things about right so uh, in tomorrow's class i'm going to give you the brief introduction of vpc virtual private cloud concept along with the subnet concept which we have left over with our in our current session so um, just to have given you uh, what is the ec2 instance and how to create it and how to connect with you so there is uh, it, it is also used as a big concept but as of now you, uh, you ec2 is enough for you which I have explained you, but there are some major concepts uh, like uh, security groups and EC2 um, uh, volumes and backing it, taking the backup of the EC2 instance and snapshots. Some of the concepts are there in EC2. Uh, once you are very good with VPC, I'm going to explain that in EC2 concepts as well. So if you get uh, more understanding with EC2 and VPC, you will be able to create on your own and you will be able to create your machines and you, you can uh, you can let you can learn a lot of things from AWS Cloud. So uh, make sure that you will uh, not only in our sessions you can uh, search in Google or you can search in for YouTube for a uh, lot of uh, explanations regarding the EC2 concepts and VPC concepts. So you will get a better better understanding this uh, better understanding of this concept. So that uh, moving forward you won't get a lot of difficulties whenever whenever you are going to work with your organization. Hope you got, got my point, right? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. Uh, if you are stuck in anywhere, if you are facing any difficulties in any any any, part, any step of this AWS, enter AWS cloud or creating any account or installing any software, please give me a ping on your uh, on WhatsApp on my personal number or on a group so that I can help you or maybe a, a SI will help you if I'm not available to you. So don't. Uh, stuck, don't stuck anyway, and don't uh, try to uh, escape uh, escape escape practicing because um, 
if you if you try to escape from practicing you are going to cheat yourself that's not a good good thing for you so i hope you got my point and please try to be on this session or be on this aws uh, be connected with aws and uh, until you get a job uh, uh, until you get a job for every let's say suppose you you want to be there you know in, in you want to sit in sit in, in front of your laptop with aws uh, with aws concepts around two to three or two to four hours a day otherwise it uh, uh, it won't help you when uh, when you when you're going to work with you or work with your organization right so thank you so much for joining uh, keep that in mind please do practice and if you get any difficulties please ping me on whatsapp okay yeah, yeah and also uh, i have uh, pinged you on saturday or friday regarding uh, giving me the new idea numbers and email ids so i don't get i didn't get any any numbers and any email ids from you so i'm expecting by today everybody so that i can start uh, creating resumes for you and creating a nokri profiles for you and uh, uh, i will show you how to update your uh, nokri profile and how to apply for a job as a aws and devops engineer so it is better to start earlier otherwise it will take much time okay yeah yeah thank you thank you so much for joining have a great day all of you bye bye yeah thank you bye bye Mr. Shilpa, you can end the session. That's for today.